Today I'm going to be reviewing the Renogy E-Flex 10W solar panel with a USB port. A solar panel usually does not put out constant voltage enough to power a USB port. If you put a solar panel out in the sun, the output is always changing depending on a lot of factors like the time of the day, the cloud covering, the shades, and the orientation of the solar panel. And if you put it behind your backpack and walk around, the output is going to change a lot. So I'm curious to see what's inside this USB port. So I'm going to tear down the USB port and open it up to show you what's inside and how it works. This is a mono crystalline solar panel with a USB port on the back. So you can plug your USB power devices directly onto it to charge your device. It's divided into two halves, so you can fold it to make it more compact. There are 10 cells on each side. Each solar cell usually puts out about half of volts. So the total output is 5 volts on each side. So probably the two sides are connected in parallel to put out 5 volts, but double the current. It comes with 4 suction cups, so you can hang it up a window. It also comes with a copper aluminum carabiner so you can hang it up a fence or a tree. You can also hang it up behind your backpack if you're hiking on a trail. This is a pretty lightweight and compact solar panel that can fit inside a small backpack to carry around. It's pretty convenient, but how well does it work? That's what we're going to find out next. Alright, let's put it to the test. I'm going to use the solar panel to charge my power bank, iPhone and iPad. I make sure to drain down the batteries on these devices enough so when I plug it in, it will guarantee to give a full charging current and not a trickle charge. So here's my setup. I have a long USB extension cord that I split the wires so that I can insert my amp meter to measure the current going through the wires. I'm doing this at 12 o'clock bright at noon, so this is the time I should get the maximum power from the sun. This solar panel is rated at 10 watts and at 5 volts. It should give me about 2 amps max. So let's try the USB power bank first. And it's charging my power bank at half an amp. Next up is the iPhone. And it charges my iPhone at only 0.4 amps. So far it's not looking good. Next. I plug in my iPad and it seems to have a problem charging the iPad. The power keeps coming on and off. Most of the time it's not charging my iPad. I try to remove the USB extension cord and just connect it directly with one single USB cable and it still does not want to charge the iPad. So as far as charging the iPad, it does not work. This solar panel is rated at 10 watts or 2 amps charging rate, but so far the maximum current I've got is about half an amp from charging my USB power bank. I'm curious to see what the maximum rate of charge this panel can do, so this time I'm going to use my foam cutter. It has a nichrome wire which can take a lot of current with my built-in 4 volts, 18650 high discharge battery pack it can do over 13 amps. So I'm going to go ahead and try this on the solar panel. Are you ready? Boom! The maximum we get is about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 amp, less than an amp. And if I tilt the panel a little bit towards the sun, I get about 1 amp max. So there you have it, this solar panel is nowhere near the advertised 2 amps charging rate as claimed by the manufacturer. My next test is the reliability test. All I'm doing is just to plug in my iPhone and let it charge the phone. And this panel just keep getting disconnected periodically, I'd say about 5 to 10 minutes or so. Then it reconnects back again and goes back on charging again even though there were no shading or any changes to the orientation of the solar panel. I'm guessing because the sun moves across the sky constantly and every time the sun moves there's a change in the solar output 
and the solar panel is sensitive enough to sense the difference in the solar output and it tries to reset itself by turning on and off. So even though it still charges the phone, it keeps getting disconnected. Every time it reconnects, it takes about 20 seconds to go back online. So not only does it charge the phone at a very slow rate, at 0.4 amp maximum, it just keeps getting disconnected and that would take even more time to charge the phone. Talking about shading, I also did a test on the effect of shading on the solar panel. The result is extremely bad. In full sun, if I only cover just one cell out of 20 cells, the solar panel would get disconnected and stop charging. And the charge only resumes when the shading is removed. Shading is always the biggest enemy of the solar panel, but getting disconnected because only 5% of the solar panel is shaded, that's very pathetic. So next step, I'm going to tear down the solar panel and show you what's inside. I'm not going to tear down the solar cells because inside here we only have what, 20 small solar cells connected in series. And um, there's nothing else to see inside this solar panel. But what I want to see is this junction box here inside this USB port. So let's open this up and uh, see what's inside here. So here it is. It just being glued together by some silicone on the back. And you can see the two wires that are coming out of the solar panel and goes into the USB junction box. And here you can see clearly the positive and the negative terminals on the wires. I'm curious to see how many volts this solar panel put out before it goes to the junction box. So I have my two alligator clips here that's connected to my voltmeter and uh, let's see how many volts it can produce. Right now under this light is 1.3 volts and I'm going to use my high intensity light and shine on the panel and it should show the full voltage. 5.6 about 5.5 5.6 volts so the entire solar panels both sides puts out only 5 volts this side here has 10 cells each cell produces half a volt so you take half times 10 that's 5 volts so that means on each side it produces 5 volts. So that means that both of these solar panels are connected in parallel. And probably that explains why when there is a shading of just one cell, it affects the entire solar panel and it shuts down. And that's because the USB controller here uh, needs to have input of both solar panels at the same time to be the same and because one panel doesn't put out the same output as the other one so therefore it sees a difference in the output and therefore it shuts down so next step let's remove this plastic cover here and uh, let's see what's inside I already removed the four screws on the corners there we go, that is the USB controller that takes the uh, 5 volts input from the solar panel and puts out constant 5 volts to the USB port. So here is what the controller looks like. So this is what keeps turning on and off the system when there's a change in the solar output would say every 5 to 10 minutes or if there's a shading on the solar panel it would turn off too. I would say this solar panel is pretty well built. It just needs a better USB controller. So what is the verdict? 
Well, I would not recommend this solar panel to anyone. This should be advertised as a 5 watts solar panel, not 10 watts. And it only puts out 5 watts or 1 amp when tested in an optimum condition. Normally, when you charge a phone or USB power bank, it only runs at half an amp or two and a half watts. And that's all I have for now, folks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.